Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Powerful Man Show. I am your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host, Tim, The Powerful Man Matthews. What's going on, brother? Look at that smile. If you guys are watching uh, this on video. It's funny. It's funny. I never know what I'm going to get. Um, I never know. Maybe that's the design of this. Keep me on my toes. I don't know. I love keeping you on your toes, man. You know that. But yeah, I'm I'm great. It's uh, approaching Christmas, so tomorrow I head up to Leeds. It'll be nice to see uh, some family. And then when I come back, I think a lot of people arrive here next Wednesday or Thursday. So it's it's only today when I looked at it, I'm like, okay, so when do they arrive? Like, oh crap, next week. What? You just don't realize, do you? It just pff, on you. Well, it is. And when this comes out, it's going to be the week before Christmas, right? The, when this actual podcast comes out. And it's nuts. I came down this morning to you know Christmas presents wrapped. You know, my wife wrapped Christmas presents while I stayed up. You know, my, one of my kids, a four-year-old, um, he likes it when I sit in the room with him while he falls asleep. So last night, he waited a long time to fall asleep, like an hour and a half. <laughs> um, so luckily, I have my iPad in there. But yeah, it, it's it's coming really fast. Um, you know, winter is here. Christmas is here. Next thing you know, right, it's uh, the new year. And as you plan out the new year, coming in through there, obviously, something we talk about a lot is divorce day which is, I, I believe it's the first Monday after the holidays. Um, you know, and for those guys that haven't been listening to this is something that we did some research on because obviously a lot of the men coming through the program are in a position where divorce is on the table, or at least a conversation or mm -hmm. thought about it is. And there's uh, lawyers have actually named a day in the year called divorce day. And this is when the majority by percentage of divorces are filed. And I think it's seventy-seven percent was the last I think I heard Tim are filed by the wives. So that means literally, if you have four marriage, well, first of all, you have eight marriages, over fifty percent end in divorce. Of those fifty percent that end in divorce, three out of those four are initiated by the woman. That's crazy to think about. Yeah, which kind of segues into today's topic, right? Um, so. This is something I was uh, was shared with me from one of the advisors. So for you guys that don't know, um, if you're interested in learning more about how the activation method might be able to help you be able to save your marriage without having to talk about it, then what you would do is you would apply for the program and basically speak to an advisor who would advise you on the, the best path forward, regardless of whether that's with us or not. And one of the... I don't want to say it's an excuse because I'm sure the men believe it when they say it, right? But at the same sure. time, obviously, being where we're at, we can see that it is just a bit of an excuse. But one of the excuses, anyway, is the fact that, hey, my wife has filed for divorce, right? She's told me she is out. So I'm just going to give up and I'm just going to go along with it. And this actually came from one of the women on our team who's an advisor, and she was really frustrated in sharing this. And she's like, can, can these guys see that the woman just wants the guy to step up and lead? Like, can, can you and Doug just do a podcast on this? Because I just want to shake these guys. But instead, what they're doing is instead of standing up and taking a stand for their family, for themselves, they're just kind of rolling over and saying, okay, well, yeah, it must be over. So I thought we could speak to that. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, I get it, right? Being a guy that's been not in that exact situation, but when you're in the muck, right? You're in the mud and you feel like you've tried everything. You feel, you know, what, what a lot of us guys do, and I'll give my version of it and a lot of the other guys, is when the marriage isn't working out, you try everything, right? And what, you're tr what you start trying to do is do all the things right. And what I mean by that, Tim, is we start, we go, okay, all right, I'm just going to be a better guy. Then she's going to see that, right? She's going to see the true colors because she's complaining and she's, you know, frankly, bitching about some stuff. So I'm going to do the dishes. I'm going to cook dinner. I'm going to take care of the kids, alleviate her stress. The things that she's complaining about, I'm going to go solve those things. And because as men, especially as business leaders, we're problem solvers. I'm like, cool, I'll put this out. I'll get the maid. I'll get the housekeeper, babysitters, whatever needs to happen, we start doing. Then when it's still not working out, the... For most of us, what happens is the thought process is, well, son of a gun, I've tried everything. 
I just throw my hands up. There's nothing more I can do. And the reason is, is because and I was this way at the time, we think there's nothing more that we can do. We're out of our resources. And it's not a matter that we don't, we just don't know that it's us leading. We don't realize that these, that what our wife is really complaining about is not the dishes. She's not really complaining about the real thing she's saying is not about us watching the kids more. What she's really saying is, I need you to step up and be the man that I saw when I said I do um, in the wedding. And that comes through, first of all, the, you know, we call the triadic connection, right? So there's three components to that. There's a clean slate method, which gets you to balance things back out in your relationship. There's the hidden motives technique that we teach the guys through, which allows you to tip the scales in your favor from, you know, your wife, you and your wife bickering to actually laughing and her looking at you with admiration. And so when this happens, your the wife usually freaks out too, right? This is the thing most guys don't get is when things start going well, their spouse is going to test them. Is this real? Is this guy solid? And most of us guys, we crumble under those tests because we're like, look, we're doing all these things right. Things were just amazing yesterday or today. Why now are you bringing up all this crap from the past or what have you? And we falter, right? We react. We go into DEER mode, which DEER is an acronym for defend, explain, excuse, react. We go into that DEER mode. And as soon as we do that, it's like the analogy I like, I like using now is it's like having a lighthouse out in the middle of the ocean. And if, you, if you're a ship at sea and you're, you're struggling, right, and you're trying to get into safe harbor because there's jagged rocks everywhere, and you see a lighthouse, and you're like, oh, thank goodness, this lighthouse will guide me safely in. Well, then as you're going into, into shore, when the lighthouse goes out, you're like, oh, my gosh, you panic, right? And you turn your ship back out to sea because you want to hit, hit the rocks. And the lighthouse goes back on, and you're like, okay, this oh great, it's working. And you start to go back towards shore, and if it goes out again, you go, okay, I can't trust this lighthouse to guide me in. I'm going to go back out to the stormy waters and find another lighthouse that I can depend on. Now, in that analogy, Tim, the ship in the storm is your wife, your partner, and you as the man are the lighthouse. And so when we react, when we go into deer mode, we are just like the lighthouse whose light goes out periodically. So therefore, the ship, our wife, can't trust that lighthouse to always be there. And the reason this is important in this analogy is the third part of the triad, hence triad of, of connection, is the live like a king system. And this live like a king system allows you, it's like having a backup generator for your lighthouse. So when you're getting ready to react, or even if you do react, that generator kicks on. And so the light might flicker, but it's still there where the ship feels, okay, this is still safe for me to go in. Because most guys, their wife is scared that her heart's opening up again. She's starting to see the man that she's always wanted to be there for her, the man of her dreams, the man she said, I commit my life to you, with you, right? And they say this in front of people, in front of God, all of these things. And then is he going to go back to being that other guy that, that we just didn't get along, the guy that we argue with? So she's going to test it. And if you don't pass the test, right, you become the lighthouse that goes out. And this is where the live like a king system allows you to go through. So you use that triad of connection. It really allows you to get in there. But again, if you don't know this and you haven't gone through the activation method, you haven't actually attended an alpha reset, different components that allow this to all come together. It can feel like, you know what? I've done everything I possibly can. I'm out. I give up. And I did this in my marriage. I threw up my hands and I left. <laughs> I left, I figured I did everything I possibly could, everything I possibly could. She's still not happy. This woman is, you know, insatiable. You can't make her happy. It's not working out. And I took off and went to San Diego for a month. And that's where I realized I was being, I didn't realize this analogy, but I was being the lighthouse that was going out. Yeah, I think it's, a great analogy, right? Because we are we have had guys that have joined the program after they have been handed divorce papers. Oh yeah. And some of them have pulled it back from the brink of divorce, some of them haven't. But the ones that haven't, I can think of one guy in particular, he was on track to pulling it back. And the reason why he didn't was because his wife caught him taking pictures of her. I don't know whether she was drunk or something anyway. 
um, to basically use against her in court so he yeah. could create a more compelling case to get custody of the kids. Yep. And bearing in mind, she'd started to take her wall down at this point, right? You imagine she hands the divorce papers, her walls are up. Secretly, she might, you know, she still wants him to step up and lead, but she's had enough. She doesn't believe that he will do it. And for some women, it can be frustrating when the guy turns around and says, right, now I'm going to make a change. Because she's like, well, hang on, why is it taking it's so long? Why is it taking for me to go and hand you the divorce papers for you to finally see that I'm serious about this because a lot of guys can be guilty of, you know, missing the warning shots that go off, right? Because he's so busy with other things. Now, false assumptions that she won't leave me, you know, oh, when I solve this, this business problem, then I'll fix my marriage. Right. But to your point earlier, Doug, you know, 70% of divorces or 77 are initiated by women. She will leave. So for a lot of women, when they've handed the divorce papers, to the man, the wall's up. They're worried about taking the wall down, right? Is he going to hurt me again? It's, it's a big thing for a woman to start taking those walls down. It doesn't happen overnight. She's built the wall to protect herself. And she isn't going to start to take it down just because you've decided to use love as a king system. She's not going to take it down just because you've started to validate her. She's, she's going to, okay, okay. She's going to be, in, there's going to be intrigue there. There's going to be curiosity there. There's going to be a lot of the right things getting put into the recipe. And the wall just isn't going to come, come collapsing down straight away. But as they start to take it down, because they see that you're taking a stand to be the lighthouse, as you're saying, Doug, you're determined to keep your light on. Instead of it flickering, it shines brighter than ever, right? And you make the change because you know you've got to make it for you so you can be the man that you know you're capable of being. and honestly, the man that she probably fell in love with in the first place. And like the guy who got handed the divorce papers, but then got caught taking the photos, right? You get, you get to remain consistent. We did a podcast episode on uh, when is it too late to save your marriage, right? I think that was, I'll find out what number that was. But the point I'm making is listen to that episode. If you want to save your marriage, you take a stand. You be the lighthouse to, to Doug's point. And you remain consistent. You don't get caught taking photos to build a case because then you got one foot in, one foot out. But when she catches you, that wall she's been taking down is going to be built higher than it was at before. It's exactly what it, you know, it is. I mean, that's a, just an example. Um, on the flip side of that, there's a guy who I won't mention his name. We'll call him B. Um, but his wife had handed him the divorce papers. He went through the activation method. Then he went to the alpha reset, um, recently and he, he and his wife now are being intimate again, which before they weren't right. And so now they, because he's coming back and he's being consistent day in day out, he's following the program. He's following the methodologies. He's just, he's doing it in, in Tim in, in America, we baseball's big here, as you know, and the best, everybody wants to hit home runs. But the best baseball players are hitting singles every day. They're just getting on base, getting on base. They're doing the basics. In football and soccer, the same thing. The men that can do the basics, or, or women, anybody playing that sport can do the basics, win. They're the best, most reliable players on the team. You don't need the flashy. So I can understand what these guys are saying to the advisor. I mean, they're just they're at the, they're ropes into the rope. They don't know any better, per se. They're, they don't know a solution. Obviously, they're going to be what I would call in the 1% because they're at least reaching out for an insight. And that's what happens, guys. When you reach out to the advisors, they're going to give you an insight into what's going on. Right? Because so many times when we're in this muck, you can't see the forest from the trees when you're in it. And so the advisors can at least have some separation and say, hey, look, this is what we think is, is happening for you. Um, and hopefully, you know, that's what's going on when she was talking to him. Uh, which is great because these guys are getting a woman's perspective, a married woman's perspective in that case, which is also really good. But, you know, I think what we get to remember as men is all men, in my experience, want to be the leader of their family. They take a lot of pride in being able to defend their family, right? By whatever means necessary. If someone comes in an intruder to attack their family, if they think it's the government, whatever it is, they're going to defend their family. 
Yet when it comes to the inside of their family, the marriage part, they have not shown up as powerfully as they could be. Thus, their wife has had to take that leadership role. And when the wife has taken the leadership role, they, by, by that circumstance, have taken a back seat or the passenger seat, right? A lot of times the kids take the passenger seat and the men, husbands are in the back seat and they relinquish all control. So when she does serve the divorce papers or she does bring up divorce, they're used to following her lead. When that's the opposite of what the wife wants. So the wife's saying is she still wants you, right? She still wants the man that she married. It's just things have changed. The key here, guys, is you can change it back. But that starts with you taking the lead. And you got to be decisive. You got to be decisive. That is one of the key components here, men, is be decisive. You can't be on the fence all the time. You can't be one foot in, one foot out. Kind of that classic story that all of us guys have heard. You know, you go up to someone, especially your wife, goes, where do you want to go to dinner? I don't know. Where do you want to go? I don't know. Where do you want to go? I don't know. And it goes on and on. Somebody has to make a decision. If you're letting your wife make that decision, you're probably letting her make a lot of other ones. Be decisive. Where do you want to go for dinner? Hey, we're going to Tony's Italian restaurant. We're going to be there at six o'clock. Uh, I got a babysitter for the kids. Be ready by 545. Boom. That's a different energy. I'm leading with that energy. But you also got to be decisive. Like, look, am I going to do everything in my power to save my marriage? Yes or no? Well, Doug, there's this, that. And the, I don't want to hear your story. Yes or no? If it's no, cool. Get off the fence. Do what you got to do. Um, and I, I, don't, I want what's best for you. You get to make that decision on what's best for you. The answer is yes then you better start making doing some actions, right? You better start moving in that direct, direction decisively and figuring out what it is for you to do. Not decisively as in tomorrow, not decisively as I'm going to put this on my calendar, decisively as in pause this podcast or this show and make a call with an advisor, right? It doesn't have to be our program. I obviously think it's the best or I wouldn't be involved in it. Do it something else. Do something else where you're going to get a third person perspective on what's going on in your marriage, your relationship, as it relates to your life, your business, and everything else. You see, guys, we keep our groups at a maximum capacity of around nine. Super small, horrible business model, right? If we could get 50, 100,000 guys, much better from a business perspective. We keep it small because it works. We know that guys can get the attention that they need at that level with a professional coach. That is the key, and that's one of the differentiating factors, right? So it's up to you on what you want to do. You know, if you think listening to another audiobook is the is a solution, I'm here to tell you it's probably not. If you think go, going to therapy is, I'll tell you, maybe it works for you, but most guys I know, therapy is just looking at the rearview mirror, looking at the past. And if you're like me, you walk away from that feeling worse. My wife and I would fight more after going to marriage counseling, right? We would fight more about <laughs> the same friggin' issues over and over or over again. I don't care if it's in the church, you know, or if it's actually with a professional marriage counselor or whatever it is, you're just dredging up the past. You would never do that in a business. You wouldn't keep going back to the problems that were in your business three years ago. You would look at how can I solve what's going on now? And how can I look towards the future to build what I want? That's what a good entrepreneur or business owner does. That's what you want to do in your marriage. But just like in your business, you need to be decisive. You need to take action and you need to lead. If you're the owner of your company and you're letting a, an employee, and this is not to talk down to your wife, but you let your employee run the show, it's your fault, right? This is the truth because it's your fault in that case, in that scenario, if the company's not doing well. The truth is I did this too. So is you allow well, we as nice men and I'm a nice guy, so to speak, like I would do almost anything for somebody because I care, but we allow our wives to take the driver's seat because we're trying to be nice guys. because We think that's the right thing to do. And it's not what your woman wants guys. It's just not. No. And that <clears throat> episode that I was mentioning a moment ago is episode 416. How do you know when it's time to leave your relationship? Mm-hmm. And that's a great one to look at, guys. And there's also one we did, Tim, on being decisive. I can't remember what it is, but when we started talking to the wives, 
uh, of men. And look, we're, we're in a, a huge advantage because we have thousands of men. I think there's over 60,000 men involved in the movement in one way or another, but we also have a lot of women that are involved. We get to talk to the wives. My wife is, as a lot of people know, coach, coaches women. So I get to hear her point of view from the woman's point of view. They want their man to be decisive and take the lead. They're tired of taking the lead. They don't want to. They want you to make the decision. They want to see you improving and, and running with things. The problem is, is they have grown not to trust us or you as a man. And so they have had to start taking the reins. Guys, it's time to take those reins back. Showcase by action, not by words that you're serious about the marriage, whatever that may be. I hope it's not too late for you. Sometimes it is, guys. Sometimes it's, got, it's just gone far too gone. But for a lot of the guys, the majority of the men, at least that we see coming through the program, who have even been filed the divorce papers already are able to reconcile. And the ones that aren't, the ones that aren't and that actually do go through divorce, their relationship with their ex is a uh, is 100 times better, which is great for the kids. And that's because they have the tools now for the ex-wife to say, hey, look, I'm the man, I'm in charge, and I'll make decisions for our family, even though you've moved on, right? Again, it's rare that that actually happens, but it does. And, and the proof's in the pudding. A lot, some of the, well, most of the men who actually get divorced going through the program continue on with the powerful man movement for years to come. And it's because they get, they see the benefit in it. It's not for any other reason. These are very intelligent business owners, very smart guys with big hearts, just like you and I, they want to do the right thing. But the key here guys is choose. You're going to be a lighthouse. You're, you're a lighthouse, whether you like it or not, you're a lighthouse. If you're listening to this, what kind of lighthouse are you going to be? Are you going to be the lighthouse that goes out from time to time? You're going to be the lighthouse that's checked out right now. That's almost never on. Right. I've been that lighthouse before. It sucks. It doesn't feel good inside. You're just sedating yourself. Or are you going to be the lighthouse that shines so bright it guides every ship to shore? And because the lighthouse, you know, the bulbs burn. So are you going to have a backup generator in your lighthouse, like the triad of connection? That's what it provides for you. Are you going to have those extra light bulbs on hand, so to speak? You know, that's when we look at the live like a king system and the other applications. That's what that provides. It's like having an automatic switch and a backup generator to get on there. But it's a great question. Either way, I'm fired up about this, as you can't tell, because I want this so badly for you guys. I really want you to get it because I didn't get it when I first started. I didn't have somebody on a podcast or a, a YouTube video talking about this. It, it wasn't talked about. At least I couldn't find it. And it would have saved me so much pain. It would have saved me so much money because I was so focused on the problems of my marriage, I was losing so much opportunity cost in my business. It was ridiculous. But worst of all, it cost me time with my wife, my, you know, and my family. And that's time. You can't buy it back. I got money, but I can't buy back the time. I can't buy back the horrible holidays, right? I can't buy those experiences back. I can only create from now. And so guys, I'm in your corner. I want this for you guys. Um, you know, but this is up to you to make the decision to step forward and step to the line. 100%. I mean, you've said it all there, right? I'm just thinking about these men. Um, yeah, just if you do not want to accept the divorce papers, do not accept the divorce papers. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Be the lighthouse, like Doug's saying. Just, uh, I just feel this energy inside of me where I just, I want to inject it into these, especially this particular guy, because I was familiar with his conversation. So, um, yeah, just be the lighthouse, guys. Yeah, guys, be the lighthouse. Shine brightly, right? Brightly, not only for yourself, for your marriage, for those around you, for your kids, and bring those ships safe to harbor because I know you're strong enough. Guys, I am in your corner, uh, as always. Uh, if you're interested, go over to thepowerfulman.com. We do have a bonus in there. If you click the start here, there's a little training for you guys. If you want it, it's free of charge. Just go ahead and check that out. Until next time, guys, we'll see you on The Powerful Man Show.